Last week I showed you one method of making a line fast to a pin rail. As with anything else, however, there is more than one way to skin this particular cat. So today, I will be giving you a closer look at the method I used last week and showing you two slightly different techniques. Now, of course, they all have their advantages and disadvantages, so it's really best to be able to do all three. Here is the method I demonstrated last week. It involves making two turns from left to right in a figure eight pattern, and then a simple locking hitch. That is, we take our line and twist it back on itself before putting it back over the pin so that it locks down the other turns. For neatness's sake, always remember to coil any spare line and put it back on the pin by pulling through while twisting. Method number two is very similar to what I just showed you. It starts the same way with our left to right figure eight turns. And in principle, we're going to make a locking hitch just like last time. But before we do, we'll actually want to double our line. This results in a locking hitch with a protruding loop here. It might look a bit messy, but it does actually serve a purpose. Once we have our line nicely coiled, we can simply use that loop to pull through and place it back on the pin. Now, the disadvantage of this method, of course, is that when your coil is down on deck, the locking hitch can simply be pulled out and our line is no longer made fast. Our last method for today is simplest of all, but it is still remarkably effective. It starts off like the other two, making left to right turns around the pin in a figure eight pattern. But instead of just two turns, we're going to do three. Then on the fourth, we just drop the line down and pull tight, burying it under the other turns. It may not look very secure, but Thanks to friction, it is actually a remarkably sound belay. To put the spare line back on the pin, just use the pull and twist method that I've already demonstrated. Now, before I leave you, I do want to give voice to one final thought regarding safety. For the purposes of this demonstration, I once or twice allowed my fingers to stray into the space between line and belaying pin. I did this so that you could clearly see what I was doing and because it is nearly impossible for the line I was using, our gantlin, to come under any unexpected strain. In any real world situation, however, it is of utmost importance that you keep your hands and fingers clear of the space between pin and line. Failing to do so is a good way to lose a few fingers. So always remember to palm your line. And there you have it. Everything you ever wanted to know and more about the lane. Remember, Practice makes perfect, so stop lounging about the deck like an idler and get belayed.